Hey everybody and welcome to week three of Happy Easter. Uh, we wanted to make sure that the environment that we had for tonight's video accurately reflects how you should be feeling uh, coming into Good Friday as, as we are preparing for the death of Christ. And so um, anyways, I hope that you've had a good Holy Week so far and that you've had a good week just in general, um, considering that everyone's stuck at home in quarantine. Uh, well, Let's uh, get started talking about what we want to be talking about. And the first thing that I wanted to kind of quickly discuss is, um, you know, a, a moment when I felt alone. And I don't mean like I was just like was alone, but I actually felt alone because there's a difference between feeling alone and being alone. Uh, I'm an introvert. When I am alone, that's usually good. But when I feel alone, it's usually bad. And I, I remember uh, way back when, when, you know, I was just a little lad uh, and I was going from being a junior in high school to being a senior in high school. Now, uh, I was on the swim team and when I was coming up, it wasn't cool to be on the swim team. So it was a really, really small group of guys uh, that swam. Uh, we had to fuse like six or seven dudes on the team one year. And I remember when I went from my junior year to my senior years, everybody uh, that was on my relays, everybody that was on my team was suddenly gone because they were all a year ahead of me. Um, and it, it left me with a feeling like I had no one that I could depend on to be like my teammate and, and to be there to go to the, the meets and to, to participate in the races. And I, I still remember that feeling of just like, it's not what it once was. Like I've, I've lost, um, the, the great relay team that you know, we were going to state and stuff. And I remember that feeling of loneliness. Uh, and so the, the first question uh, that I just kind of want to post to you guys is, in what areas of your life have you felt alone before? I mean, after all, we all know what it feels like to be on our own and to be alone. So what's the situation where you've felt alone before? I mean, have you ever had your family move to like a long way away where suddenly you've lost your fin group and you've had to go to a new school? Uh, have, have you had to live through a broken family situation? Have you lost a friendship or a friend group? Um, have you ever been through a breakup? Like, have you ever been in a time that uh, you feel alone? And one of the, the crazy things about when we're feeling alone, it, it it is a great opportunity for us to start to believe things that aren't necessarily true. Um, like we didn't deserve to be in the relationship or we're going to be stuck in this way for the rest of our lives and that there's no way to get out. Uh, those things aren't true, but they definitely feel that way because loneliness can be very, very overwhelming. So what do we do about it? So let's look at Jesus's life, like the, the end, um, you're, you're gonna hopefully see this video on Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday is the day before, the Wednesday of Holy Week is the day before uh, the Last Supper, Jesus's last um, like peaceful time on earth uh, before he was betrayed by Judas and, and the whole thing starts where he ends up being crucified on Friday. And so I want you to, for the, the best of your ability, put yourself in the disciple sandals. There's 11 of them um, when Jesus is going to the Roman court because Judas has betrayed him and he's, he, he's killed himself. And so there's 11 of them. And what happens is they've been following Jesus. They've confessed, especially Peter, that he's the Messiah. They believe that he is the son of God and um, they recognize who he is. They've seen all of his miracles. They've, they've watched it all happen. And when he went in at the triumphal entry, they saw that him being celebrated as a, as a coming king. And there's a sudden turn of events. And less than a week later, Jesus is dead. And uh, of course, we know what happens, but they didn't. And so when Jesus died and he was gone, the disciples all responded in, in, you know, how you would expect them to. They would probably were hiding from Romans or the Pharisees or people that were seeking him out. Like, did, did you say Jesus was Messiah? Were you one of his followers? I mean, they, their response was 
sadness in a lot of ways. I believe that because uh, the man that they were following that they believed was, was God was gone and he, he had died. They'd watched it happen. And so we, we even have a picture of um, them traveling like to Emmaus. And uh, we, we know that there's, there seems to be kind of some implications that they were, they were starting to go their own ways, but hadn't left Jerusalem yet and didn't really know what to do. I mean, let's face it. These guys had left their families. They'd left their jobs. They, they had abandoned any form of income that they had. They only had the clothes on their back because they were so trusting in, in Jesus to care for them. And he, he had just disappeared. They were left alone. Um, and that's not good. Now, of course, we know the rest of the story that he's going to come back again. And he did. He was raised on the third day. That's going to be Sunday morning when we celebrate um, Easter and when Jesus defeated death and came back. But something interesting happens is Jesus left them once when he died. And then he left them again when he ascended into heaven. And their response was a bit different this time. Uh, I want to, I'm going to read a passage to you. This is out of John and it's, be, and this is a passage where Jesus is telling them um, about how their lives are going to be different. It goes like this, but in fact, it is best for you that I go away because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you guys. He was sending his spirit to live among them. Um, Luke in the very beginning of Acts talks more about it, but you will, and this is uh, the very beginning of Acts. This is before the ascension. Jesus is still here, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses telling people or telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. You see this time when he left, he, he didn't leave them alone. And so after the ascension, when he went back to heaven, he sent uh, the Holy Spirit to be the advocate for the disciples and everyone who followed Christ after them. And advocate, um, it has a, a couple different meanings, but you can really sum it up to somebody that, that stands in your stead, somebody that is with you, uh, someone that's not going to abandon you, but they're going to take up your case for you. They're going to be your advocate. So we can really break it down to just one of the, for tonight, this one simple truth that Easter has a meaning and that Easter has an application. And tonight, as we were looking at that, what Christ has done on the cross and who we sent to be our advocate, it is that Easter means that you never, ever have to be alone. And when you're never, ever alone for Easter, what that means is that at any point in time, no matter what your situation is, no matter what you are enduring, whether you are alone or feel alone, or if you are in crowds of people, which are obviously not right now, but the day will come uh, when we will be in crowds of people again, and that life is returned to normal. And whether there's anxiety for that, or there's, there's just a struggle to get through the daily life of how the world has changed today, it doesn't matter where you are or what your situation is, you always have someone to talk to and that person um, is Christ and the Holy Spirit will be your advocate. And the other point that I have uh, for you tonight or this morning or whenever you're watching this video is that you're stronger than you think you are because you have someone with you to give you strength. And so whenever we feel alone, whenever we have those moments where we feel like we can't go back to how things used to be or that we can never be healed or that we're always going to be alone. We need to recognize those for the lies that they are and remember that we are stronger than we think we are because we have an advocate who is always with us. So with those two things being those two things, you, you have someone to talk to and you're stronger than you think you are. I want you to, to consider your own life, your own struggles, your own um, whatever it may be. And, and seriously, 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 talk about it to the Holy Spirit. Talk about it to an advocate. And then remember that you are stronger than you think you are because the Holy Spirit is with you as a believer, as someone who, who knows and follows and recognizes Christ's sacrifice on the cross and his, his defeat of death and the resurrection. And so as we are approaching the end of Holy Week, um, we need to remember that this is a somber time because w we should be sad. Jesus died because sin in this world and we all have participated in sin in this world. And that is why Christ died. We should be somber. He died for us and he died because of us. 
And so as we are approaching Holy Week, I mean, at the end of Holy Week, when Jesus was sacrificed, he said that when he wasn't here, his followers would fast. Fasting is, is a form of, or a sign of like, you're grieving. And we're getting there. We're, we're going to be having um, Monday, Thursday, tomorrow, or today, well, I guess when I post this video. Um, and then we're going to have Good Friday, which is when Christ died. And then we're going to have a, a time of waiting. And, and just like um, those that were there with Christ, they mourned um, his death. We should be somber for this weekend. And we should mute our phones if you heard that. I'm sorry. And then that is to build us up with great anticipation uh, for Sunday morning, which was the resurrection, uh, which I'm looking forward uh, to, to joining with um, everybody um, around the world, but especially in our church for worship, even if it is just through Facebook Live or YouTube or whatever. Um, I'm excited that we'll be able to celebrate the resurrection together. So I want to thank you for joining us on this three-week Easter journey. Uh, this is it for Easter. We're going to be starting a new series next week. And so I hope that you've enjoyed it. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below or just reach out to me or any, other, any of the other church staff directly. Thanks. Bye.